Right on the edge of the Vier constellation in the Galente controlled region of Essence is a system with a very unusual name. Pilots travelling between the Pecanouette Circle and the Petri Perimeter can take a shortcut through a cold, barely inhabited white dwarf system known as Old Man Star. I was making a return journey from Thera to Heck, and Old Man Star was the closest wormhole connection to the Mimitar trade hub, so this seemed like the perfect opportunity to swing Heaven's Outrage around the Villor Gate to get some good drone cam footage of it. The story of Old Man Star ends with the Velour Gate, a unique stargate anchored to a set of asteroids, upon which viewers can see the ruins of a strange building. The story begins, however, way back in YC-11, just as the Galente Caldari War was coming to its conclusion. It should be noted that interstellar jump drive technology is fairly new, and before its advent, the only way to connect systems together was to send a ship out to a system and manually build a gate there. These vessels would travel approximately a third of the speed of light, meaning a 10 light year journey would take approximately 33 years, with the crew in cryogenic stasis for the majority of the trip being revived as their destination neared. Many of these ships were retrofitted with jump drives once the technology became available, putting an end to decades-long journeys, though none of these ships had been built to support such technology and malfunctions were frequent. Such was the fate of the ship sent to a cold and desolate system known as Uperia, a system that held little monetary value on its own, but would serve as a link between the Pecanouette Circle and Petri Perimeter, creating a long-term trade link. The construction ship departed Velour with a crew of five, far smaller than had previously been needed for such vessels before since the advancement in drone and robot technology. The journey was some 12 light years and should have taken only a few minutes, but shortly after departure, disaster struck. A miscalculation in the drive made the jump misfire, careening the ship several light years off course into the middle of an asteroid belt. Seconds later, a large asteroid impacted the ship at full force, killing all but one of the crew instantly. The ship's drone operator, Hull Daria, was the only survivor. Back in Villor, the miscalculation was apparent to the station personnel who had sent the ship off, and since the ship's communication arrays and subspace beacon had been all but destroyed in the impact, the ship and crew were believed lost and written off, and the Uperia project was shelved. In the wreckage of the construction ship, Daria's first problem was how to feed himself. To save space and weight, the ship had been sent without food, but the greenhouse from the ship's previous incarnation was still equipped to grow edible plants. However, they were useless in deep space without the proximity of a sun. The limited supply of water and oxygen were also pressing concerns, since the asteroid strike had ripped huge gashes in the sides of the ship, destroying many of the ship's vital systems, and the cargo hold had been damaged particularly badly. But Daria refused to give in. He began by tempering with the fuel tanks, filled with liquid oxygen and hydrogen to serve as propulsion in the final stages of the journey. Despite the inherent dangers of fiddling with extremely flammable ingredients, Daria managed to get a controlled reaction from the fuel, providing both water and oxygen. Pouring next over the wreckage, he then gathered and welded together every piece of glass and metal plate he could in order to gather and store what light he could from the distant stars to get the greenhouses operational, finally linking them to the ship's septic tanks for fertilizer. The result was enough food for one man, and ultimately a small ecological system that would eventually provide oxygen too. With conditions on the ship now stabilised, Daria next needed to correct the course of the ship. The impact meant that if left to drift, the ship would miss Operia by billions of kilometres, but the propulsion systems were wrecked beyond repair. Without a quick fix, the ship would drift into deep space for eternity. There was no time to rebuild a new propulsion system, so Daria opted for a more direct solution. He launched every one of the ship's token combat missiles, directed them back against the ship, and using carefully calculated armor points, managed to both avoid blowing himself up and return to the ship to its correct course. He had contemplated using the missiles to reverse course back to Velour, but he realized he had neither enough missiles nor the ship's stability to survive such a brute way of turning the vessel. The only conclusion was to continue the drift to Uperia, a journey that would take a further 44 years at its current speed. During the journey, Daria spent the time creating robots and drones from the scrap in the cargo hold. 
discovering that the asteroid that had hit the ship was rich in megasite, a super rare mineral valuable for advanced robotics and drone manufacturing. Living entirely in zero gravity gave Daria a distinctive insight into high-tech assembly that has never been surpassed in originality or brilliance since, despite the limited resources that he had available at the time. And so the 44 years passed, and eventually the wreckage of the ship arrived in the Uperia system, using the last drops of fuel into badly damaged directional thrusters and utilizing the gravity of the stellar bodies in the system, he zigzagged the ships between the planets and eventually managed to stop the ship from shooting back out into deep space. The passage of time had turned Daria into an old man, stretched thin and gaunt by a lifetime spent in zero gravity, but his spirit was undaunted and he was still unwilling to give in. His prospects for rescue were still absolute zero, and so his only hope of survival was to construct the Stargate as planned, manually, on his own. Since the original materials for the Stargate had long since been destroyed or modified, he began to create a workforce of drones. He crashed the remnants of the ship into an asteroid close to the resonance point, constructed a makeshift assembly factory, and spent the next five years single-handedly building a Stargate. A feat that maybe a handful of people across the entirety of New Eden could pull off at all, Daria had managed at the age of 80. Imagine the surprise then of the Stargate controllers in Velour, when a patched up construction ship bearing designations that had been thought lost almost half a century ago limped through their Stargate triumphant. Daria died a few years later. His frail body and failing internal organs had been too badly damaged for cloning, but not before launching his own company, Crayodron, centered on the blueprints created during his incredible voyage. His legacy remains strong to this day, with Crayodron remaining the largest drone manufacturing company in the cluster. It seems that renaming Uperia to Old Man Star in his memory is the least that could be done to honor a lifetime of innovation and unswerving resolve in the face of disaster. As I activate the Velour Gate and continue my journey home, it's something I like to ponder on. How would I have coped in that situation? And as much as I wish it weren't the case, I think to myself simply, I wouldn't.